Hello guys, I'm uh, Ivan. I've been working at BlaBlaCar for the past uh, two years, and now I'm more uh, precisely working on mobile marketing. And today, I want to share with you guys a story of love between uh, ride-sharing, marketing, and <laughs> mobile. So first, who in the room here has already heard about BlaBlaCar? Okay, so I'm going to go quite quickly uh, on, on this. But I think it's important to keep in mind that so at BlaBlaCar, what we do is we enable people to travel together. So it's a very simple idea. It's me, tomorrow I'm traveling from Berlin to Hamburg. I have uh, four empty seats in my car. And instead of traveling alone, I'm going to post my ride on BlaBlaCar, travel with some people going the same way, and share the costs. So it's simple, but there's two important things to, to keep in mind. The first one is we have no professional drivers on the platform. And when some people try to go, we, we hunt them and we exclude them. So it's only people like you and me who happen to be traveling between two cities who are on the platform. The second thing is that we only do um, intercity travels. So we don't do short distance. The average distance on Blah, Blah Car is around 350 kilometers. So it's long distance uh, ride sharing. There's one part of a business that's pretty traditional, you know, it's the travel search engine, and it's pretty similar to what you could find actually on, on Kayak uh, or on other OTAs. But what makes us really unique is the trusted community part. Uh, it's people traveling together, and this is only possible because uh, people uh, create trust by having a declared profile with a photo, you know, a bio, by having peer-to-peer -peer ratings, and also by having a feature called ID check or you can upload your ID and make sure you're the right same person who uh, you're presenting yourself. So that's what really makes us uh, unique. And today, uh, in the world, we have uh, 40 million members. So it's a, it's a big number, but it's also important to look at the activity. And we're competing with uh, major transportation network, but the main difference is it's only people traveling who have empty seats together. So we have 12 million people who travel per quarter, uh, thanks to Blah, Blah Car. Uh, our geographical footprint uh, is over 22 countries. So we started in France and then expanded to Western Europe, later on to Eastern Europe, and then to some countries like Brazil, Mexico, India. And here what's interesting is that actually our second biggest uh, market today is Russia. So Eastern Europe is really picking up really, really fast because there's no uh, existing transportation network in some of the countries. So actually, if you don't have a black black car sometimes, it's not possible to go from city A to city B, so you have a very strong uh, market product fit. Now, if we think about m mobile, how did the love relationship start? You know, at the beginning, actually, we were a website. So there was, there was no mobile, we were only on desktop. And it's only in 2007 that we started the mobile web, then the iOS and Android app in 2009 and 2010. But it's only in 2014, with the V2 of our app, that actually you could do all the actions that were possible on desktop in the app. And it's really in 2014 that we started to see the, the mobile usage uh, to pick up. So if we look at the percentage of signups that are done on mobile, you can see here that in 2014 it really picks up and continues to accelerate uh, until 2016 and 2017 will most likely land around 70, 72%. So people sign up on BlaBlaCar, but how are they using BlaBlaCar? Are they also using it on mobile or, or more on desktop? And here, there was a major shift, actually, in 2015, where if you look at the percentage of key actions done on mobile, it's a really strong upwards trend, and they go over desktop in 2015. And when I'm talking about key actions, I'm talking about a publication or a booking on the platform. So the shift from desktop to mobile was actually pretty difficult. Uh, I'm sure some of you here have the same issue when you start to, on a desktop. To go to mobile is not as easy as just start with a mobile app. And I think there's two main things that help us uh, do the shift. The first one, uh, it's, it's some, some bold moves uh, taken by, by the CEO. So for example, in Turkey, we launched the country only with an app. Uh, and then when people went on desktop, we told them, download the app. So this helps to shift the mindset. 
There's another test we just did uh, quite recently in Russia, is we tried to redirect people who were going on the desktop website to the mobile website. And the goal here is to see that could we in the future actually stop having a desktop website and only have iOS, Android, and mobile websites, so it would be much less maintenance. So this, this like decisions help shake the mentalities. And then the second thing is organizational change. Um, today, uh, our developers' teams are organized in squads, so they're pretty you know, autonomous teams that can roll out a feature uh, on all different platforms. And we always have the iOS and Android developer at the center of these squads, and all features need to be fought first for iOS and Android and then adapted uh, to desktop. So these are the two ways we, we, we use to really shift from desktop uh, to mobile. But if, if we put all this effort into this, it wasn't just because it's cool you know, to be on mobile. It's actually because for us, there's a completely uh, new value that we can bring to our users on mobile, and we can only bring it on mobile. <coughs> if we think about a journey on Blah Blah Car, first you're going to look for a ride you know, on your computer, on your mobile. Then you travel with someone in the car, and here you only have your mobile with you. And then after the ride, you have to leave a rating. So we're going to have a quick look at each of these three steps and see how mobile can really enhance the user experience. First, before the ride. Here in this graph, you can see that the, the biggest the distance of your trip, the, so, the, so, the later, the sooner I mean you can book uh, a trip. That means, like for example, an airplane, you can book it up to five months in advance, you know, and it's going to be very long distance. Uh, on the other way, maybe an Uber, Halo, you're going to book five minutes, and it's going to be short distance. So if we look at where Blah Blah Car sits in this graph, on mobile, people, uh, on average, book 2.8 days before they travel on desktop. Uh, whereas if you look at the, the number on mobile, they book 1.7 days in advance. So what I'm trying to show you, actually, is that the mobile can really uh, enable a very different kind of behavior that's much more last minute uh, to the users. Then if you think at uh, during the ride, here you don't have your desktop with you, you have your mobile. So there's a very basic advantage to this is that when you're looking for your driver, you can have in your pocket his name, his photo, you know, the, the brand of the car, the color. So it's, it makes your life easier. But more importantly, uh, thanks to the fact that you have your mobile in your pocket, and that means we can uh, contact you during the ride, we can, we can be the point, the interface between AXA and uh, the driver, because we offer uh, so free insurance to the people who travel on Blah Blah Car. That means that if you break down, if your car stops working, another car is going to come and get you and bring you to your final destination. But we were only be able to do this thanks to the mobile app. That's how AXA accepted that we were doing like the intermediary, because we can offer, we can put them in, in contact during the ride. One last thing that's interesting for us is actually at the end of the ride, you need, you need to say, uh, I did the ride to pay the driver. So here with the app, it's pretty simple. Then if you think at after the ride, you know, at the beginning I was showing you like a slide uh, telling you that what was really unique is that we were a trusted community of people. And actually you create trust thanks to ratings. So our goal is that people should rate each other after each ride. But if when you get home, you have to go back on your desktop to leave a rating, you're never going to do it. Like you're going to forget about it, you have other things, like you have a life, so you're not going to think about doing this. Having a push notification at the end of the ride, however, makes uh, you much more likely to leave a rating to your driver, to the passenger. That means you create more trust and you create a better experience for all the users. So here, I, I think we can see that mobile and ride sharing and blah, blah, car are pretty much like uh, in love and interdependent. Uh, but what about marketing and all of this? So marketing, for sure, helps us um, push a blah, blah, car, but also to push mobile. And we have different ways of doing this. One way is to showcase the app in our ads. So that's a TV ad we had. We're going to showca showcase the, the app on banners, you know, on Facebook, also to, to always push the usage towards the app. Um, one small anecdote about this little blue guy is he may uh, seem kind of, of, of weird, to be true. But actually, it's, it's an amazing way to scale an ad across many countries. Because this guy, he can be French, he can be German, he can be Russian or Brazilian. So it's, you can really scale your content across all different markets. 
But if we come back to marketing uh, and mobile, so first we showcase the app in our ads. Second, we also invest a lot on app install campaigns, of course. So here you know it, it's pretty um, standard, I guess, you know, Facebook app install campaigns. Uh, we work with uh, Addict Mobile for display uh, ad, ad app install campaigns. Uh, and I see, like, in the past few years, well, since I've joined uh, BlaBlaCar, actually, I've, I've, see, I've seen the budget shift, especially on Facebook, you know, from a desktop to app install campaigns where we see a much better conversion rates and adoption. So marketing is going to push mobile, but I think where the biggest opportunity lies ahead for us, actually, it's how mobile can fuel uh, marketing. So you know at BlaBlaCar in the marketing team, our goal is to capture the travel intent. So I want to know when you're going to travel, and I want to show you an ad maybe a few days before uh, saying, hey, tra travel on BlaBlaCar, you can save some money, or it will be cheaper than the bus, the train. And if you think about it, mobile can really help us to do this, because you always have your mobile on you. That means your mobile knows where you're traveling. And today, we're starting to work with some companies to understand uh, how we could uh, leverage their data, the data collection. So these guys, actually, they track you all the time, and then they can sell us like batch of information saying, these guys travel regularly between uh, Berlin and Hamburg. And that means we can show you um, a tailored ad you know, with the two cities from which you travel to, with the adapted price, and we can really target the people who are going to travel in. I think it's, it's only the beginning. And we should really think of when we do marketing uh, on mobile, we should not just replicate what we do on desktop on mobile. We should really try to leverage the specific capabilities of mobile, and in our case, geotargeting is pretty awesome, uh, to tailor the message and to capture this travel intent uh, to, to, to acquire new users. So mobile, blah, blah, car, and marketing are actually really uh, linked to each other. And, and I like to think uh, of them like a, a big family uh, full of love.